elves live far away from the city in the deep forest, where there are few people but it is very suitable for the animals. There is plenty of sunshine and the right amount of precipitation, which makes many animals live there. Predators love it because of the richness of its species. Wolves also live there, but something unexpected happened. The wild wolf who was supposed to live deep in the forest unexpectedly showed up in a crowded city hospital. Just when the people were afraid, they noticed that the wild wolf did not act aggressively, which made them curious. At the time, they didn't know why the wild wolf had taken the risk to come to the city's hospital. This happened in a hospital in Siberia, which is a famous hospital and can provide effective and complete treatment for patients. The day before, the sun had shone warm on the patient in this room. The patient was in remission, and as the weather was fine that day, he was allowed by the doctor to go out for a walk. The patient felt cheerful, thanks to his gradual recovery and the warmth of the sun. At that time, the hospital was built in the city but had a path to the forest to provide patients with plenty of room to move around and a good environment. While the patient was taking a light walk, he was surprised to see that everyone else came back quickly and in a panic. At that time, they trembled and said hurry back, it was a wild wolf. However, this aroused the man's curiosity, for he had never seen a wild wolf anywhere but the zoo. Driven by curiosity, he approached the path cautiously, but stopped in a hurry when he was still far from it. There really was a wild wolf at the end of the path. Then the scary wild wolf slowly followed the crowd toward the hospital gates, and there was a riot. The proximity of the wild wolf made more people see it. The men were frightened and rushed into the hospital, which startled more people. They heard something that made them scared and curious, and more people gathered around the window to get a good look at the wild wolf without risking their own safety. People were discussing the amazing scene and many people thought that the wild wolf was crazy. Otherwise how could it have come to the hospital? Some suggested they should contact the relevant authorities to deal with the matter, while others suggested they should alert nearby hunters as soon as possible. Just as they agreed that the wild wolf was a threat to their lives. Something unexpected happened. The wild wolf stopped before he could get out of the path and sat down slowly. As if to show its friendliness, it lowered its head. As time went by, the wild wolf did not take any action, but sat quietly on the path with its head down. People were shocked at the scene. At that point, an elderly paramedic watched quietly for a moment and then slowly and calmly walked up to the wild wolf. He calmly reassured those who tried to hold him up that everything was fine and he could fix it. Then he walked firmly close to the wild wolf and watched it carefully. Then he calmly returned to the crowd and told them that the wild wolf had come for help. He said the wild wolf was wounded in the forest, but could not save itself. He told the others not to worry and to keep quiet. And that he would soon be able to deal with the matter. As he was an experienced carer, people decided to believe him. Then the man went to a building. Soon after, he returned with a medical kit. At that point, he calmly approached the wild wolf and opened the medical kit to clean the its hair. At that time, the others were very nervous, but the wild wolf remained quiet and still. At that time, it remained relaxed to receive treatment from this paramedic. The man then snipped off the wild wolf's hair at the injured spot and proceeded to treat it. He used tweezers to remove debris from the wild wolf's wound, which inevitably caused the wild wolf pain. To their surprise, the wild wolf, always fierce, did not move or make a sound. After applying anti-inflammatory medicine to the wound, the man gathered his tools and stood up before walking to the hospital with his back to the wild wolf. Others were more worried, believing that one should not turn one's back to the fierce animal. 
They watched the wild wolf nervously. Just then, the wild wolf stood up and walked toward the man. Because the man had not used any anesthetic during the treatment, the wild wolf wobbled a little. Even so, it moved firmly toward the man. The wild wolf's behavior added to the panic of the onlookers, who were terrified. They had always believed that wolves were broken promises and ungrateful and unworthy of trust. However, after catching up with the man, the wild wolf fondly rubbed his pants and then walked off into the forest without any aggressive behavior. People stereotype that the wild wolf will hurt them even before they come into contact with it, but its subsequent behavior makes them feel that the wolves are grateful and remember their benefactor. In fact, people and creatures often have stereotypes about other creatures. I think it's possible that this wild wolf came to a human hospital after being injured because of human kindness to animals, and it's possible that this wild wolf's own people have received help from humans. There is nothing that cannot be changed. Humans will change their stereotypes of animals. And animals will change their attitudes toward humans. As long as we live peacefully with animals, then we can feel these changes. Before long, there will surely be a wonderful friendship between humans, shortly after finding out she was pregnant with Finn. Paige Knutson adopted a two-year-old boxer. Named Brutus from a local rescue. Brutus is just a big teddy bear, said Knutson. He loves attention and loves to snuggle with people. When Knutson was 20 weeks pregnant with Finn, an anatomy scan revealed a serious heart defect. Finn underwent multiple procedures immediately after. His birth until he could have open heart surgery. We were extremely lucky to have found this out prior to his birth. Or he would not be here with us today, said Knutson. After several weeks and a few complications, Finn was finally able to go home. And when Brutus met his baby brother, the connection was instantaneous. Once we got home, it was as if Brutus just knew Finn needed some extra close monitoring. And he has been by his side ever since, said Knutson. The two adore each other and spend every moment together. Watching TV, playing outside, eating, and napping. Brutus often curls up wherever Finn is sitting. And follows him from room to room in our house, said Knutson. If Finn is sick. Brutus knows it and just stays right by Finn's side or lays his head on Finn's chest. Brutus hates to be separated from Finn, even for a moment, and will scratch at the door to Finn's room or pace outside it until he's allowed in. The brothers don't even like to be alone at night. When Finn was a baby, the protective dog slept on the rug in front of the crib. And now that Finn has moved to a toddler bed, it's much easier for the two to snuggle up. Finn just started sleeping in his big boy bed a little over a month ago. And that's when Brutus began crawling up. And sleeping in Finn's bed every night, said Knutson. It was as if he laid next to him to prevent him from rolling out of the bed. Wherever Finn goes. Brutus follows, even if that means being a little less comfortable. Finn then began climbing out of his bed and sleeping on his floor. So naturally. Brutus began sleeping next to him there as well, said Knutson. Now that Knutson has moved Brutus' dog bed into Finn's room, Finn will often choose to snuggle up with Brutus. In his bed rather than stay in his own. Knutson was recently able to capture their sweet nighttime routine. With the nanny cam. If Brutus is sleeping on the floor, Finn will grab his blanket and climb out of bed in order to snuggle up next to his buddy. The gentle dog doesn't mind being used as a pillow as long as his brother is comfortable. Now the whole family just expects to wake up and see Finn and Brutus curled up together. Finn sleeps with Brutus all night. Every night, Knutson said. Whether it's in the dog bed, Finn's bed, or the floor. The two always sleep together. Knutson is so happy that Finn has a best friend. 
and a protector in Brutus and can't wait to watch them grow up together. In 2007, an unusual thing happened to a drug farmer in Sichuan province. When the Sichuan farmer was going up the mountain to collect medicine, it suddenly snowed heavily. And he was trapped in the mountain for several days. He has no food, no water, and no precautions against the cold. However, as he became desperate, a leopard suddenly appeared and helped him. In a remote mountain village, there is a medicine farmer named John. His ancestors have always been doctors and knew pharmacology. John inherited the profession handed down from generation to generation and continued to practice medicine and treat diseases. John is 58 years old, but none of his children live with him. John's sons were very filial and offered to take him to live in the city several times. But he found it inconvenient to live with them. He thought he was the only doctor in the village. And if he left, no one would be able to take care of the sick villagers. As a doctor, he must be responsible to the people around him. His wife used to live with him. But she died of a heart attack two years ago. So he lives alone now. At that time, although he was alone, John was in good health and often cleaned. So his home was very clean. One day, when John was examining the medicinal materials, he found that several kinds of medicinal materials were missing and needed to be replenished quickly. He prepared what he needed and went up the mountain. John was so familiar with the road on the mountain that he soon found the medicine he needed. It was not dark at that time, and he planned to continue his search to see if he could collect precious herbs. So he continued his search. As he walked, John suddenly heard the cry of an animal in front of him. John immediately became alert, took the sickle in his hand and looked around. Nevertheless, as a doctor, he could tell that it was the cry of pain made by an animal when it was injured. John felt ambivalent. He thought it sounded like a badly injured animal. But he didn't know what kind of animal it was. He knew that the injured animal might be more defensive. But out of kindness, he decided to see if he could save his life. Thinking of this, he walked cautiously in the direction of the sound. After walking about 500 m, John stopped. He heard a voice in front of him. John saw a weedy hill and a wounded, bleeding leopard. He could not see how many wounds it had. But the weeds under it had been stained red with blood. He pitifully licked his wound. John felt pity when he saw this and wondered how he could save the leopard. He stayed where he was carefully, looking around for other animals to see if there were any other threats. It took about half an hour for John to make sure. He didn't see any other animals before he came out slowly. He stopped at a safe distance in front of the leopard. The leopard was surprised at the sight of John. So it growled with warning. But the leopard did not attack John, instead. It warned him to leave. John did not take any first aid. He just picked up the remaining meatloaf and some anesthetic in his bag. Quietly put it on the ground, and then retreated. The leopard smelled it, and although it was still vigilant. It looked very hungry, so it ate the food quickly. Before long, the leopard's limbs were stiff and his head sank to the ground. John had to wait until the leopard was completely unconscious. And then went to the leopard to check its injuries. The leopard has several deep bone wounds. And is slowly bleeding as if it had been scratched by a lion. John quickly took out the herbs picked that day. Crushed them. And applied them to the leopard's wound. Although he stepped up the anesthesia. He didn't know when the leopard would wake up. So, after doing this. He packed up his things and was ready to leave. Fortunately. The leopard didn't wake up and didn't move. After walking cautiously for some distance. John stopped. And then hurriedly turned down the hill. Sweating with fear. When he got home. John did not tell anyone that he had saved a leopard. As time goes by, 
five years have passed. One day, John felt that it was getting colder and colder. And it was likely to snow heavily. He felt that if the heavy snow blocked the foot of the mountain, he would not be able to go up the mountain to collect medicine. John thought about it and decided to go to the mountains to find available herbs. Preferably many at a time. So that there would be enough herbs in winter. Soon, he packed his things and went up the mountain. Two hours later, he found half of the medicine. But suddenly it snowed. John frowned. He thought it would not snow. So he came to the mountain to collect medicinal herbs. But now that it was snowing, he had to quicken his pace and get home before. The heavy snow flooded the mountain after collecting enough herbs. After a while, the snow began to fall heavily. John finally found all the medicine he needed. And was ready to go down the mountain. It was then that he suddenly realized that. The way down the mountain was full of snow. And the snow was knee high. He knew it was bad, so he tried to turn back. Another hour later. John noticed that it was snowing everywhere and it was getting dark. He is lost and the snow has not reached his thigh. In desperation. He decided to find a nearby place to take shelter from the snow. And wait for the snow to stop before going down the mountain. After finding shelter. He took out the dry food he had prepared and. Began to eat to replenish his strength. Then it was completely dark. And the temperature difference between day. And night on the mountain was so great that. He couldn't help wrapping himself up. John thought the snow would stop soon. But it rained for three days and nights. John was running out of dry food and water. And the temperature difference between day and night fainted him. But it was still snowing heavily. Early on the third morning. A leopard came out to hunt. When it saw a small pile buried by snow in front of it. It couldn't help but look at it curiously. Just then, the leopard realized it was John. But by that time he was frozen stiff. When the leopard looked at John. He froze, then leaned his head on John's chest and listened to his faint heartbeat. Then the leopard climbed on John to keep him warm. After a while, the leopard noticed that John's temperature was rising. So he stood up and began to look for food. After finding the food. It returned to John and continued to lie on his stomach. At noon on the third day, John finally woke up. He was startled and looked intently at the leopard that he had saved. And was relieved. John woke the leopard. When the leopard saw John awake. He licked his face happily and. Brought the pheasant he had caught to John. John rummaged for matches and. Some dried leaves before lighting the small fire. Then he plucked the pheasant and prepared the barbecue. After a while, a smell of meat came. And the pheasant was ready. John and the leopard divided the pheasant, but it was still snowing. After eating, they snuggled up to keep warm as if. It were just the two of them in the world. In the morning after dawn. The sun shone on John's eyes. He opened his eyes and found that. The snow had stopped and the leopard was awake. After the snow melted. He went down the mountain. From then on. Their relationship grew deeper and deeper. And every time John went up the mountain to pick medicine. The leopard would follow him. The herdsman thought he would never see the snow leopard again. But one day, a snow leopard suddenly appeared in his home. The shocked herdsman examined the snow leopard carefully. And he knew that it was the one he had saved before. And it was seriously injured as last time. So the herdsman adopted him again. But as before, the snow leopard left after it was healed. The herdsman is very helpless. He thinks that the snow leopard really has no conscience. And does not know how to be grateful. But what he didn't expect was that one day. He routinely went out to feed sheep. But unfortunately he was targeted by the wolf. Just when he thought he was about to leave the world. The snow leopard he saved suddenly appeared. 
It drove away the wolves and then escorted the herdsmen and sheep home.